This is a good tree, this next tree on our map. It's got awesome bark, it has a ton of uses, and cool wood. Let's just get started. Yep, this tree is one where you can use it to make a flavorful syrup from its bark. It grows tasty edible nuts that are tough to crack but delicious. And its wood is gonna be some of the hardest and most versatile on the entire map. Today we'll be making the great state of Illinois out of a piece of wood from the shag bark hickory, Caria oveda. This is an episode I'm really looking forward to. On the official state tree map, Illinois was a map piece I always really liked in the end. It looked nice, but the white oak is the state tree for three states. So I love when this project gives us an opportunity to give a map piece something new and unique. And the shagbark hickory is nothing if not unique. As you might have surmised, this large tree gets its name from its iconic bark, which for lack of a better term, grows in these shaggy looking plates. Shagadelic. However, this characteristic is only found on mature trees. The bark on young trees is still smooth. These trees are found throughout the eastern U.S. where they grow in a wide variety of sites and soil types, usually among stands of oaks, maples, and other hickories. They grow these green fruits, inside of which you'll find a hickory nut, which is edible and delicious. The tree starts producing seeds in large quantities once it reaches about 40 years old, but even after that, production is usually unpredictable, sometimes going three to five years between sizable harvests. It's also a fairly difficult nut to shell. It's covered in a thick, hard outer husk. The shell is also quite hard, and it's extremely difficult to crack without pulverizing the meat inside. As a result of all of this, hickory nuts aren't commercially harvested like the tree's close relative, the pecan. That said, hickory nuts are a long-standing and important traditional food source for indigenous people throughout the tree's range. The most common traditional method of processing hickory nuts is to place whole nuts into a semi-hollowed birch log and pulverize them, shell and all, using a large limb fashioned into a pestle. The resulting hickory meal is then added to water and boiled, and the slurry or soup is ladled off to be served as a beverage or cooked with hominy or rice. In fact, the word hickory is derived from the Algonquin word, uh, apologies in advance for my pronunciation, pakahikora, which is the name for the hickory nut milk drink made from this process. Shagbark hickory wood, like other hickories, is famously hard and tough, one of the strongest commercially available domestic woods in the United States. It's often used where shock resistance and strength is important, like with tool handles and other items such as axles, plows, bows, and even drumsticks. Its wood is also sweetly fragrant and is popular for smoking meat. In addition to giving the tree just tons and tons of character, its shaggy bark also provides shelter and homes to all sorts of critters. Notably, the Indiana bat. I mean, just look how cute this is. Little bats living in shaggy bark. Get right out of here. Also, like I mentioned at the top of this video, the bark can be used to make hickory bark syrup. So without further ado. I mean, yeah, this is some shaggy bark. Let's make some syrup. I'm following a walkthrough from foragerchef.com in which I take about eight ounces of bark harvested from a living tree. Now, shagbark hickories have plenty of bark to spare, but still, make sure not to overharvest from any one single tree. A good rule of thumb is your harvest shouldn't really be noticeable once you're through. Rinse and scrub the bark, no need for soap, just running water and a brush to get the dirt off of there. And then let it soak in a bowl of warm water for 15 to 20 minutes. Then drain and place on a baking sheet and put into a 400 degree oven for about 25 minutes. Note, this will make your house smell smell amazing. Remove, let cool, and then break into smaller pieces and place those into a large pot covering all the way with water. I used about six cups. Bring to a simmer and let cook for 30 minutes. Then let it cool before running through a fine mesh strainer. Measure the volume of your hickory bark tea, then pour it into a clean pot, making sure not to dump that very last bit that might contain any pieces of bark that made it through the strainer. Then add an equal amount of sugar. So if you had four cups of the tea, add four cups of sugar. Then return to the stove and bring to a boil, cooking until reaching 225 degrees, which should take about 20 to 30 minutes. Then while still boiling, pour it straight into a pair of clean pint mason jars and add your lid and let it cool. Oh, the color of this is absolutely gorgeous. We do have some, some crystallization going on here, which can happen. Usually it's if you cook it at too high a temperature. I think my thermometer was lying to me. I was a little bit worried about that. It never actually got to the temperature I was aiming for, but this isn't a big deal. You can just warm it up in the microwave or on a stove top and it'll dissolve the crystals. You'll be fine. So let's give it a taste. Ooh, that's lovely. It's kind of like a smokier, nuttier maple syrup. 
It's definitely not on par with maple syrup. You can tell that this is not like a boiled sap, but like a simple syrup that's been infused with some flavor, but that flavor is really good. I dig this. You can use it anywhere you use maple syrup as a topping, mixing it in with something in, in cooking or grilling. And what I'm thinking of using it for is to flavor some of that traditional hickory nut milk. All right, like I mentioned, hickory nut shells are really tough and a regular nutcracker isn't gonna do the job. I found a hammer and a spare log worked really nicely. All right, once again, I'm turning to foragerchef.com, which has a really nice walkthrough of this whole process. I'm starting with about eight ounces of hickory nuts, cracking them open first to make sure they're not rotten or rancid. You want the nut meat to look nice and white. If it's yellow, discolored, or of course black, or looking moldy at all, just throw those away and keep cracking until you've gotten through the whole batch. Once they're all cracked and inspected, this is where you traditionally use that giant mortar and pestle, which is called a budigan or budagen. I was not able to find a pronunciation guide online. But if I had a good sized birch log and the time and tools to hollow it out with hot coals, which is the traditional method to do so, then I'd love to try that. And maybe we'll get to in a future video, but for most of you at home, the easiest way to process the cracked nuts is by simply adding them to a high speed blender and blending until most of it is processed into a fine mealy powder. Combine that with a liter of water and bring to a simmer. Skim off that first thick layer of foam as it often traps bits of shell and save it for use later on. Then just let it simmer for about 15 minutes. Then turn off the heat and you'll see the shell particles start to sink while the nut meat floats to the surface. Then just go ahead and ladle all that liquid, nut meat and all, into a jar until most of the liquid is gone. Feel free to angle the pot and get as much of it as you can. You won't be able to get all of it, but that's okay. And we have our first batch of nut milk. This is gonna be creamier, a little bit richer, and best for drinking on its own. But we can now repeat the process, dumping that first saved foam back into the pot and adding another liter of water, bringing that to a simmer, letting it go another 15 minutes, cutting the heat and ladling again. This batch will be less creamy and more watery and won't have as much nut meat in there, but it'll work really well for cooking, like as a base for soups, rice, and more. So there we have it. I'm going to warm this one up and try it with some of our hickory bark syrup, but we can't just enjoy this with a regular old drinking glass though, right? We gotta go the extra mile. All right, got some more hickory wood on the lathe now, and I'm just gonna turn that into a simple cup. First by turning this piece of wood down to round. After adding a foot or a tenon to one end, we can then flip it around and mount it onto this thing called the chuck, which are these jaws that'll hold it into place for us. Now I'm just gonna fine tune the outside shape. I personally prefer clean, simple looking pieces. So I'm going for just like a plain drinking glass look here, which will also let us see more of the grain and color of the wood. Now it's time to hollow out the inside. I'm first gonna use this Forstner drill bit. Ideally, I'd use one that's even larger than this, but this is just the biggest one I have on hand. So I'm gonna have to carve both a little bit deeper into this piece since it's a bit shallow, as well as carving away a little more of the inside wall. Then it's everyone's favorite step, sanding. Finish with a food safe oil and wax. I'm using Walrus Oil's cutting board oil and cutting board wax. Part it off the lathe, clean up the bottom, and 
we've got ourselves a finished cup. I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. So let's take our hickory wood cup, add our hickory nut milk, and sweeten with some hickory bark syrup. Overkill? Probably, but hey, that's just what we do here. Oh, that's delightful. I actually really like like the chunky hickory nutness to it. The hickory syrup obviously goes along with it perfectly. Five stars. Okay, lest we forget, we still have a state to finish and get up onto the board. This is a cool piece of wood. I love that there's a small stripe of some really light sap wood. We've got some fun color variation in the heartwood as well. A fun map piece for a really great tree. One of my new favorites. Tell me in the comments if you've ever tried hickory bark syrup or hickory nut milk. And of course, let me know what state and or tree you'd like to see up on the map next.